And so during that period of time, the, the <coughs> legislature could have, as per our Constitution, called itself in the session. So a majority of the House of Delegates, or a supermajority of the House of Delegates, talk to each other, we're, we're agreeable to do it, but the Senate wouldn't do it. And that's the same Senate that just completely failed all the citizens in West Virginia. With a republic, and, and this is where, and, and I'm a Republican, uh, this is where the Republicans have failed. They got a supermajority for the first time in however many years. All they had to do was have a simple majority vote that could end a state of emergency. Yep. They, we've been under a state of emergency rule in this state with a Republican supermajority. My little county voted 80% red. We've been under one man rule for over a year because I tracked all this stuff. Jim Justice declared a state of emergency in West Virginia when there was zero, zero positive COVID-19 cases in the state, zero. The next day, conveniently, the first one was diagnosed. Fast forward, I never would have guessed. Fast forward to one year later, 13 months later, we still are living under a state of emergency rule and our coward legislators have been up there doing, talking about pepperoni rolls. Right. Right. And they're about to leave. And they all they had to do was a simple majority vote to end the state of emergency. Right. The vacuum in the carpet was a roof. I mean, so John, it's, out, yeah. it's outrageous. John, let me ask you something. So, I mean, look, we the people uh, are the masters, and they are the servants. Right. Mm -hmm. And so there's a reason why they didn't do it. Right. That's right, and yep. you know, because the majority of our fellow citizens were okay with it. Right. That's the problem. Right. Right. It is outrageous, but let's be clear about what we're dealing with, people. Yep. Okay? You are, like I said, a fraction of a sliver of a minority. Yep. Right. You know, you know it. You're the only people in town walking around without masks. You're probably some of the are walking around with masks. And that's fine. I, I have no, you know, I look at folks and I'm like, okay. Are you doing that because you really want to? Because you think the government has the sign on the door? Whatever, it's fine. Do it. You got to do it if you're going on an airplane, blah, 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 whatever. I don't do it. I'd stay, I'd stay away from people. It's like, if you don't want to be near me, don't be near me. Whatever. But I'm just saying, the point I'm making is that's the problem. Let me, let me tag on to that if I may. Okay, so I invited John here specifically to address this issue, not the mask issue. But the issue of what do I do? We the people are in charge. I'm one of we the people. What do I do? This is the civil rights attorney. You probably heard of him. This is the guy who constantly fights the government for your civil rights as recognized under the Constitution. as much as his work, okay? But, the, and, and we, didn't, we didn't accord John his own block to speak, but if I may, I'd like to give him three minutes to go ahead and tell everybody what practically we can do and, and what he has done as an example of what we can do. Is that, is that all right with everybody? Yeah. Thank Lord, three minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I can do that for three hours. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I have. And, and I'd like to plug his, uh, his podcast too, The Civil Rights Attorney. You really need to watch that thing. Well, the, the civil rights lawyer on YouTube, the, I technically don't upload it on the podcast uh, platforms, but I might have to because I got my first video yanked by YouTube while <laughs> being recorded live a couple days ago, first time. First, you first know why? Because I mentioned I mentioned actual science about why masks don't work, and I was literally reading from the World Health Organization website wow. while, while they yanked the video. So I appealed it. I said, look, we go back and look. And I was reading from the WHO and, and they actually reversed it. Yeah. But, but anyways, yeah, you can watch me rant for hours on YouTube about this stuff. But I guess to, to answer your question, unfortunately, is, is I, don't, I don't have an answer. I don't know the answer. The, the sad reality is, is that I don't think there's anybody, well, there, there's, there's, the judiciary is, is not going to help us, neither the state nor federal. Now, the federal judiciary is appointed for life. There's not a whole lot you're, you're going to do. They're going to do what they're going to do. But I think that
that they they want covered. You know, if if, if the state legislators legislatures are are taking certain actions and people are behind certain things, they have some cover to make what they think are controversial decisions. They might rule in our favor. So, you know, look, look at Bush versus Gore in 2000. I mean, they wouldn't have done that with, uh, you know, without without some sort of cover behind it. Now, the state legis the state judiciary, that's a whole different creature. I think it's a great question of, of the, you know, what's best to elect judges or to, or to have them appointed. And, and if so, you know, how's that going to work? The state, the state judiciary is so far been unwilling to do anything. Really, some of the states, like in Wisconsin, that they have, so far the West Virginia judiciary has done nothing. But I, I think it's worth a shot to try at least one more time. I think we've, we've, we've come through, we've reached a scary point, and I think it's a point of no return, that right now, as we sit here, it's a fact that the government can do anything it wants to you, anywhere it wants, at any time it wants, and there's nothing that you can do, nothing. Right now, they have criminalized your breath, the breath of your children. They're restricting your breathing, and they get away with it, and they can arrest you. If you don't wear a mask over your face, that is unprecedented. Not just in our history, but I think world history, even looking at, at dictatorships around the world. So we're not going to be able to depend on any of the judiciary to help us. Of course, the, the federal government, we're trying to protect ourselves from them already. That leaves our state legislature, which, as I just explained, has completely failed in their, really their one job mm -hmm. so far. And, and uh I think the, the regular person out there has now had their eyes open to this. They, they understand the concept of freedom where they didn't before. Maybe they weren't interested in politics. But now they, everyone knows somebody who's had their small business shut down, whether it's a hairdresser or a barber or, or whatever the case may be. I think people are fed up with it. And that's the angle I would take. That's the angle I would take. We, we ought to have an army of people at the state capitol yeah. burning the masks yeah. mm -hmm. because they, the, the government, the media has hit the science. They hit the science of, of the uselessness or, or very limited useless uh, capability of masks. But it's not about that anymore. We've got Joe Biden parading around with a huge mask on his face. <laughs> And everyone knows why he's doing it. It's not because he thinks he's protecting himself or others. Right. We've turned into a George Orwell novel, literally. And if, if we can't depend on our, our state legislature, then we're doomed. So I, I think replacing the, the weak among our state legislators needs to, it should be a priority. And if you get real patriots in there, I mean, that's what's going to be necessary. And they have a record now. Pretty much everyone in our state senate voted to continue to allow the governor to rule as a dictator. It's only in the House of Delegates where you can see two of the patriots uh, are. And so I, I think you you got to get involved and get the bad, you know, get the bad apples out of there. I think that's the only way. You're not going to depend on the courts. And uh, you're going to have to do something different than, than has been tried already because, you know, they, they've done what they've done. We've allowed it to happen. There has to be some larger grassroots effort. So I don't know what that is, but I agree it's going to have to come from the people. Maybe a, ma a, a, uh, a mass mask burning or something. Hey, I can, I'll, can I'll, I make a comment? Please. Yeah. So I'm I'm an anti-mask person. Okay. And, and, I, and you for masks, no problem. We're not going to win on that issue. So. The people have spoken. They don't care. So I'm with you. Let's go down and keep our arms. I'll do that. But let's not get frustrated. Let's find an avenue where we can actually win. Right? Like state of emergency. Under which he's issued his orders. That's, you know, I think we might have a little bit more um, popular support on the business closings and some of the other stuff. I don't know. I mean, I look around. I'm the only person in Home Depot without a mask on. 
Okay? And in Weiss. Not in Lance in here, man. Because I'm there with you. Oh, did you see me? Come on, let's talk. We'll talk face to face, like within three feet. And we'll show everybody that, you know, we're not afraid. I'm looking at the floor of us. Okay. Anyway, but John, you see what I'm saying? Well, I get, I'm really well, here. I'm here. We've got to talk to our friends and family and stuff to a degree, but it's it's almost like, uh, do we want to fight that battle? Uh, Florida has 22 million people in it, and they don't have a mask mandate. I know. And, and that's supported down there. Texas, well, they no longer has a mask mandate. We have 1.7 million people, and we not only do we still have a mask mandate, but we still have to stay at home order. I know, it's crazy. And you know, when you look at, but nobody stayed at home. We talk about the election stuff. Now, actually, West Virginia did not sign on to the Texas uh, lawsuit, to my understanding. We signed on to an, an amicus brief supporting it. Now, the, the difference being, I don't know, maybe it's just not, you know, it's, it's not getting as far out on the limb. And, and why is it important? Because for the same reason that the election stuff was unconstitutional and bad, it's the exact same issue with the COVID thing. It's, it's separation of powers. It's we've allowed the executive branch to entirely uh, become both the legislative branch and the executive branch. It's the same thing as the election law changes. So in order to embrace the, the issue of election law change, you have to also embrace the issue of, of the COVID fascism you know, that, that, that's been occurring. And it doesn't matter that the legislature has, hasn't tried to stop the governor or governors in, in other states. Their inaction does not equate to constitutionality. So I, I think that the, the lockdown issues are still there as well in addition to the masks. I mean, uh, there's still, you know, if, if he's able to lock down barber shops, not just from cutting hair, but from not being able to just sell shampoo out, outside their front door, while Walmart can sell shampoo mm -hmm. with people inside the store. If we've allowed that to happen just by the arbitrary decisions of a governor or who, whoever is behind him making decisions, then I mean, what, what difference does any of this make? Because I mean, talking about the principles of federalism and separation of powers, you know, the U.S. Constitution doesn't even have an express separation of powers doctrine. It just implies it. Our state constitution, actually, if you haven't read it, read it. It's very, very well written. It's easy to understand. It actually has an express doctrine of separation of powers. Very, very strong. And there is, there's not a, there is no argument to be made that one man government rule is constitutional in West Virginia under a state constitution. You know how it's been allowed? Do you have any idea? I wrote, we wrote a, a large, large uh, document explaining why it's unconstitutional. Do you know the, the theory upon which the state Supreme Court has allowed it? I don't know. They didn't explain it. Wow. They just said no. So. So if I can jump in here, I, I think that I actually agree with you both in in the sense that I agree with John. Yeah. I'm not disagreeing with this. Right. And and I think that um, the difference, John, that you're saying between Texas and Florida and apparently what's going on in West Virginia um, versus California right now and some of those things um, are the people's tacit acceptance because fear is a great motivator. Right. So if we're saying that politics is downstream from culture, we're cultivating the culture of fear. Culture is downstream ultimately from faith and truth. So what are we believing is right. true? If we are believing the lie, That's right. yeah. then we're going to accept that and that will be part of our politics. The people finally in Florida rejected the lie. The people finally in Texas rejected the lie. The people, some people like John MacArthur, were the only ones in California to reject the lie. They were willing to accept the consequences, whatever those may be. But now California is reopening because Newsom is afraid of being recalled because right. the people finally stood up, right? So we have to make these arguments in the philosophical and the legal sense, but ultimately that's not going to prevail unless we, the people, stop believing in the lie. We have to
and now, now you're in my parade. Okay, so Marsha, you need to add to the policy plank John's thing about, you know, we gotta pass, you have to pass legislation to rein in the out of control judiciary. I mean, the judiciary to be governor. Right? Yeah. Right. Okay, Marcia, so. Four more questions. Yes, sir. Give me two seconds, please. So, Jenna mentioned earlier that the, uh, the founders of our nation uh, offered their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honors. You guys have all heard of Gandhi. You've all heard of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. You've all heard of Jesus. What degree you ascribe to their principles or not is not the point. The point is their methods were effective. So who is prepared to walk out in front of the Manning crowd and lay it all down? Who's prepared to say that my kids' right to raise their kids in a free, just, prosperous, and secure land is far more important than whether I get made fun of I get made fun of no matter what I do. Whether I, you know, <laughs> which of us is prepared to step out there? Now, you know, John is an expert in what he does. The fact is that the system is clamping down on us and it's making sure that I, as a citizen, when I go to John, who is a technical expert, and say, do your voodoo magic in the legal system for me, and they just say, well, we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna do what we're supposed to because we don't like you. The only response to that is the people have to take action. What is stopping the people of West Virginia? It's fear. Why, is, why are they afraid? Because they believe a lie. Okay, who is prepared to walk out there and demonstrate that the lie is a lie? Who is prepared to go out there to suffer the slings and arrows and going to jail and losing what you own. Who's prepared to do it? Thanks, Bill. I know you are. I've seen you do it. Because that is the answer. That is what's going to change all of that, all of this that we're dealing with. And it's the only thing that will is when we go out in front of the people and we encourage them by taking action, suffering the repercussions, smiling about it, getting up and going back and doing it again. That's how we're going to win this thing. Okay, I'm sorry. And I Jim. want to emphasize real quick, I have, if I may, I want to emphasize something that Dr. George said too, which is that um, yeah. every time that we can argue this important, like what John is saying, we should be doing right. that. And we should be appealing to those in authority. We should be considering civil disobedience as being willing to do what, what John MacArthur is doing, just standing firm, not in a hateful way, not in a violent way, not in a, in a way that's distasteful, but simply saying, I serve God above men, and I am willing to obey God rather than men when it comes to these issues of such great importance, like uh, making sure that church is open, like making sure that our children are able to uh, to participate in the church and that we are able to direct the education of our kids. You know, some of these things that are so incredibly fundamental. And so, I mean, that's when I get up every day, I don't care what anybody says. I'm willing to, you know, to put my reputation, my life on the line to say, I serve one person, and that's Jesus Christ alone. And I don't care about anything else. Yeah, the people are uninformed and can be easily deceived by designing men. Elbers Jerry, about 240 years ago. That's where we're at right now. That, uh, can tell you exactly what's happening. What did you do? Uh, you know, most many of you probably know who Tom Roper is, a uh, radio show, uh, you know, one of the only radio shows I listen to probably. He got me turned on to this uh, uh, Daniel Horowitz's podcast called the Conservative Review Podcast. But I'm a great podcast. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I listen you know, I'm pretty much every episode now. And, and uh, Daniel Horowitz uh, probably inspires some of my, my mass breaks, uh, but, but I'm glad he did. And he's absolutely right. If you're not listening to him, listen, listen to him. Uh, but anyways, as far as what, what he talks a lot about this, I mean, you, we've got to be more like the left. Unfortunately, they have this stuff perfected. Why does why, why are all these corporate big corporations woke? Because they get letters, they get contacted. The left is organized. They 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 blow up their social media. They blow up their emails. They get people fired. They get things done, and we don't do that. The, the, the conservatives just generally have never done that because they're, they, well, they have jobs during the day, but also because, because they're polite. But you know what? It's time, to, in, in my opinion, to, to throw that out the window or else, or 
else we've lost forever. So one of the things that he's done, really too late now, but I'm trying to help with it, is he started off in all 50 states, or primarily in the red states, because that's where work can be done, but so he's starting these little kind of task force teams that he calls the Liberty Strike Force. And so I've agreed to be one of the, the team leaders for West Virginia. So we have, we have about two other people I'm working with right now, and then we have about 20 people that have already signed up for it. But this is just basically a, just a loosely affiliated uh, Liberty Strike Force. So it's just to organize in our state to jump on things when someone needs to jump in on If If one of these you know, tyrant legislators is is uh, letting the governor get away with whatever the back deal made has been made, you know, we, we jump on it and uh, we bring it to the public's attention and then we get them, we primary them or we get them out of office one way or the other. So that's one thing that, that you can do here in West Virginia and other states. If you, I think the website, there's a website he has you sign up for you know, any, any state that you can sign up for West Virginia. I think it's con, conaction.network is I think what it is, conaction.network. And if you sign up, uh, you know, we're setting up the West Virginia <coughs> portion of it. And it's basically just to use, utilize some of the methods and tools of the left on, on our side and to strike back in the same way. And then also to, to file lawsuits. You know, that's what the left does. All the lawyers are mainly on the left. They file lawsuits over anything and everything. That's what the ACLU does. I mean, we've got to do that. But they have all the funding to do it. We don't have any funding. You know, just, just uh, a little bit here and there. So I think, in my opinion, we've, we've got to, we've got to get more aggressive. And, and then, you know, talking about the definition of insanity, well, well, you know, if we just, if the independent party just does what, you know, the Republican party has done, that's not going to be enough. Especially now in West Virginia, as the smart Democrats, are just going to become Republican more and more, right? And, and yeah, they, well, that's already happened, as you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So at least one. And, and, and as, as our as our friend, former delegate uh, Jim Butler, you know, so eloquently explained, and I never really realized, not being a, in the legislature or anything, that you know these these guys that get elected or gals that get elected to the legislature, you know, what ends up happening is is that they they don't have any money to run these reelection campaigns. And so where do they get, the only support they get are from the lobbies. And, and, and on Facebook, it's easy to, to say that, you know, so-and-so should have voted voted one way or, or had more courage. But at the same time, although I'm ranting about that on Facebook, you know, maybe I don't give any money to that guy's campaign. So the only bit of money he's getting is from, you know, XYZ lobbies. And that's why, out of necessity, if they're going to stay in office, they, they're, they're going to have to vote. To, to make those lobbyists happy. So what we need is the people of West Virginia need their own lobby. Right. So they need to get involved in campaigns and, and provide some of their money to some of the candidates who are good, like this guy, Delegate Joe Jeffries, who good. took on the governor and made him mad to the point that he called him out yet, yesterday or the day before. And demanded an apology. And, and demanded that the, the <laughs> legislature kick him out. That, not only do we need to support that guy, we need to, to multiply, to clone him in some way. No, you but, need to recruit him into the independent party, right? Yeah. Well, he's a very close personal friend. And, and one mean, thing that you said too, John, was, um, you know, with lobbying and then also the local corporations and the corporate boards and all that stuff, the leftists bring their values to work. Sure they, do. they don't buy into this whole ridiculous idea of separation of church and state. They don't care about pushing their morality on us. And as you said, we're too polite, we're too, we bought into this fiction that somehow the conservative position is that, oh, we don't bring faith into politics. The leftists do all the time. Their faith is just false and wrong. So why aren't we doing that every day? Why aren't we bringing our values to the workplace? This isn't just a, you know, we're here on a Saturday. What are you doing Monday through Friday that you're influencing your workplace, your corporations, the things that you buy? I mean, I, I'm not particularly a big fan of boycotts, but some people are. But in terms of what I prefer is to spend my money and dollars advocating for things and encouraging things that are good and saying, I'll give to this cause or this, I'll buy this product because that's a, their fundamental value premise is something that I support. Okay, so it's three o'clock. Ms. Jenna's got to leave.
uh, before we, and we're going to have to shut down this panel here to, to move on. I know Bob, Bob wants to ask a question. So what I'd like to do is turn the floor over to Miss Jenna for a minute so she can say goodbye and any last parting shot she has. Then I'm going to escort her out and Jeff's going to give the microphone to Bob and we're going to leave it to Mike and John to answer. Okay? Well, just real quick, uh, my, my name's Jeff Becker. I didn't introduce myself before, but...